So welcome everybody. My name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. This is a free live online class um, about adding an additional revenue stream to your business and it costs you nothing to do it. Uh, we have about 400 students registered for today's class. Tom is going to speak uh, mostly. Uh, I'm just going to introduce and finish up. And um, it starts in about nine minutes. But while I have you here, um, if you're attending this live class, great. If you need to leave early, no problem. Um, we video record um, all of our classes and put them on Natchi TV. So there's the URL, www.natchi.tv. If you go there now, you can check it out. Um, we have a couple online live classes coming up. Um, they're live just like this one. Um, here's the... Uh, Roof Data Technician one, oops. Um, here's the Roof Data Technician one, and then we have how to find defects during a home inspection class, and tips on using infrared during a home inspection. That should be a really good one. Um, the finding defects one is pretty good, I would say. Um, I'll be teaching it. But it's on Tuesday, November 22nd, uh, for a couple hours. Um, usually our classes go for half hour to an hour. Um, I'm making this one two hours because I think we're going to be there for a while. What we're going to do is talk about how to find defects during a home inspection. And how do you define a defect during a home inspection? And what is a defect? If you're looking at something, how do you know as a home inspector that it's a defect or not? And if it is a defect in your opinion, how do you write it up? And what is a material defect? as it's defined in the standards of practice. And what's the difference between the two? And let's say you're, you're inspecting a home like we typically do, uh, especially in the United States. Um, most home inspectors are inspecting homes that were built 20 or 30 years ago um, in the 80s and 90s. Um, so they're existing homes and they were built to code back then. So what do you do when you're inspecting an existing home that's 20 or 30 years old and you find something is it a defect? Or will the real estate agent or the contractor or another home inspector say, well, it was built to code then, and how do you handle something like that? So we're going to go over those questions. Those are really good questions. And any, any other questions that you have, because it's a live class, and you can ask questions during class. You can ask questions to me, the instructor, um, or to other students. And it will be video recorded as well. So if you can't make it on Tuesday, November 22nd, that's next week, um, no, no big deal. Just register and I'll send you a link to the video recording because we video record all of our classes. Um, in about five, six minutes, we'll have another class called the uh, how to add additional revenue to your home inspection business at no cost. The next class I'd like to show you is the uh, tips on using infrared during a home inspection. Um, there's an institute that just graciously allowed us, us members, international members, to um, refer to, download, and use um, their standards of practice for using infrared, infrared thermography, infrared devices, cameras. And we're going to touch upon that because um, I kind of like those standards. And um, so there's a bit of a confusion in the industry as well about what to do with an infrared device. They call them infrared devices. I call them infrared cameras because they can take pictures. Um, and this is a free live online class as well. I'm going to have uh, a lot of technology, uh, three infrared cameras, maybe some moisture meters. Uh, we're going to spray some water um, and look for moisture and water and uh, demonstrate um, the differences between the three cameras um, and how they could be used during a home inspection. Um, and the number one thing we're going to emphasize during that class is becoming infrared certified, becoming trained in using infrared, how to interpret an infrared image that you're um, capturing on your device, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, how do you, how do you um, allow the house to reveal defects to you using this device? That allows you to see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see without it, right? It's kind of like a flashlight. People get freaked out by using the infrared camera. It's really just a flashlight. A flashlight allows you to see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see without it, right? 
Do you go up into an attic without a flashlight? Well, same thing with infrared camera. Sooner or later, I would, I'm going to make a prediction. Just about every home inspector will be using infrared. Infrared right now is at a stage where digital cameras were about 10 or 15 years ago. Now, all home inspectors use digital cameras, right? Well, um, you're on the wave of using infrared. And they're pretty affordable. And I'll show you where to get an infrared camera as well. Um, and we'll talk about standards and what kind of camera is good or bad or ugly. And then um, it's a free online class. So if you can't make it again, please register for the class. And all of those classes are on, uh, let's go there. NACHI.TV. See if I can bring up the URL. Yep. So bookmark that as one of your favorite things. NACHI.TV. It's Nachi TV. Um, and if you click the tabs on the top, um, like home inspection, we have home inspection classes. And they're all there for you. You scroll down. You can also follow a home inspector. So we got our video department to grab the cameras and follow um, certified master inspectors through their inspections. Because everyone does it a little differently. So we have certified master inspectors Jim Crum, Greg Bell, Juan Garcia, um, even Kenton Shepard, who's a, an instructor right now at Internachi headquarters at the school at the House of Horrors, um, and Kenton Schaff. So um, that, it's a really great resource uh, for new and veteran inspectors. And then we broke down um, the classes that we have recorded for you that are broken down into systems. So if you want to learn more about roofs, we have a section on roofs, exterior, structure, uh, plumbing is really good. Especially the, um, the most recent um, class that I did was about how to inspect plumbing fixtures. Doesn't sound really exciting, but um, we did some really good research, especially about dishwashers. There's a lot to know about dishwashers and how they're properly installed. Um, for example, if a dishwasher is supplied with um, a flexible cord into an outlet, that outlet has to be readily accessible and GFCI protected. So that's a new code change there you may want to um, be aware of. So I'm going to ask Tom to come on up. Again, remember to ask questions if you'd like uh, during class in the presentation. Um, you can ask afterwards as well, and um, I can see them. I'll be taking a look at the questions on my screen while Tom goes through the, the slideshow with you, which takes only about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So hopefully you have some questions afterwards, and we can answer them for you about um, this national program. Um, and it's only for members in the United States. Um, it's not in Canada yet, but we're working with Owens Corning to expand this to other countries, especially Canada, our friendly neighbor in the north. So, Tom, it's all you. Cool, thanks. So hey there, everyone. Uh, let me know if you can't hear me okay, and then we'll get the microphone adjusted. But uh, welcome, thanks for being here. My name is Tom Zakar. I've been an InterNACHI employee for a couple of years now and an administrator of the Roof Data Technician Program for about a year. Uh, we wanted to share this opportunity and give you some more information about one of the programs that is available to our members, and that's the Roof Data Technician Program. Uh, we also encourage you to get involved, even if you find it's not gonna work for your schedule or something like that. Uh, we encourage you to take the training anyway. Uh, it never hurts to learn something new and add some new skills to your repertoire, um, unless you learn how to scuba dive and you get eaten by a shark. But uh, but uh, this is a great skill to learn and just to get up on roofs and uh, learn a new thing or two. So let's get started. A great thing you can do as a home inspector is to add ancillary services to your business and participate in InterNACHI's programs. Uh, this is a great way to boost um, everything that you have going for you. Um, you might consider becoming mold or radon certified or participating in the Home Energy Score program, the Home Buyback program. Uh, the Roof Data Technician program is another one of these opportunities to, like I said, learn a new skill, increase your marketing chances, and make some money by acting as the technician for InterNACHI and Owens Corning. So essentially, in this program, you would act as the third-party representative between Owens Corning, a uh, Fortune 500 shingle manufacturer and distributor, and a homeowner who is having some issues with their shingles. Uh, this is as a result of shingle damage, such as 
cracking, splitting, granule loss, uh, wind damage, hail damage. There's quite a few things that could happen to someone's shingles uh, for them to want to fill out a warranty claim. So what the homeowner would do is fill out a warranty claim and we would send our members out there to handle the extraction of shingles and to take photos of the property itself, of the ventilation and uh, the, the address. You know, there's a couple things that you would want to do to take to take photos for Owens Corning to do a proper analysis of that claim. So again, you would act as the third party, neutral party between Owens Corning and a homeowner who is having some shingles, uh, some issues with their shingles. So the training is free um, for all members. So all you need to do is be a member of InterNACHI. And uh, if you aren't currently a member, we're, we will be, be providing a free six month membership to those of you who aren't members. So stick around and we'll give you the link for that. Tom, do you have to be a certified home inspector? You do not have to be a certified home inspector. Uh, like I said, you just need to be a member. So this is a, a, th a good thing that you can do to get started in your business, even if you're not doing home inspections, just to get some experience and to start talking to some clients. Uh, just another thing to do. So the training takes about one and a half hours to complete and it covers the technical side of shingle extraction uh, everything from, from the technical side to it to how to act as a neutral party when you're on the job. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later because that's kind of a, a pro of doing one of these jobs. Uh, the software is also free. Uh, a website is provided where you can easily upload the information that you take from a job. And the materials are free. So everything is free to participate in this program. Shingle replacements, roof cement, nails, they are all purchased through Lowe's with an Owens Corning account, which we provide at the training, uh, with the training. So all you need is your internet ID and the Owens Corning account number to get all the materials you need for a job. So the job is broken down into five steps. I just wanted to, to cover those five steps with you briefly. So the first step is to accept the job and contact the homeowner. Uh, after you complete the training, you are put on a list to receive automatic job notifications via email. Uh, pretty much any, any warranty claim that is uh, submitted through Owens Corning within a 50 to 70 mile radius of your zip code will get sent to you via email. The acceptance email, so, so should you choose to accept the job, you'll get an email that looks like this on the screen. It contains the homeowner's name, their address, claim number, the shingle type and color that you'll need, so and uh, as well as a link to the instructions page and the Owens Corning account number and anything that you'll need to complete one of these jobs. Also, we need to update it because it's not, it's no longer a pilot program. We've actually been going pretty strong for about two years now, and we have about two to three Owens Corning jobs completed per day. Uh, fluctuates in the winter and the summer. Uh, in the summer, there's a lot more jobs, but Definitely no longer a pilot program. Uh, we have a lot of jobs coming through. Um, after reviewing the acceptance email, you would contact the homeowner to schedule a date and time that's convenient for both of you. Uh, most likely it's gonna be more convenient for you since the homeowner doesn't necessarily have to be there. Just make sure Fido is locked up uh, before you step into the backyard or else uh, you're gonna be in trouble. Tom, do you have to go into the house at all? You do not have to go in the house at all. So the every, work is outside. all the work is outside. You take photos of the property from the outside. Uh, you would use your ladder to get up on the roof and, and that's about it. So after you accept the job and contact the homeowner, you would order boxes. And this is done through our e-commerce partner, Inspector Outlet. Uh, again, this is a free order. Uh, these are the boxes that you would use to send the extracted shingles back to Owens Corning. So these boxes are free, They're, they are packaged and ready to go. We also include the shipping label. So you would just slap the shipping label on the box after the job is over and send it off to Owens Corning and those shipping labels are free. And all that's done through UPS. And uh, yeah, the boxes arrive at your house within three business days, so it's pretty quick. So after you order the boxes, you would go to Lowe's. We have a list online that shows you all the Lowe's locations with Owens, Owens Corning accounts near you. So hopefully there's one close to you and uh, you would use this list to go purchase the materials that you need for the job. 
Um, we recommend calling the homeowner or calling the store first, as well as the homeowner actually, but calling the store first to see if they have the shingle type and color that you would need because you would want to save yourself some time if they don't have it. And there's a couple things that you can do if they don't have the shingles that you need for the job. So you could either custom order them. They sometimes are willing to order a bundle for you and you can just postpone the job until the shingles get there. Uh, you could also ask the homeowner if they have extra shingles lying around and that can save you another trip as well, which is pretty nice. If the homeowner has extra shingles from the previous job lying around, you could just use those to replace the ones that you're extracting. Um, Owens Corning also has other retailers involved. Uh, they don't have Owens Corning accounts, but you can call all their store locations from their website to see if they have shingles available. And if they do, go ahead and purchase any materials that you need uh, on your own credit card, and we will reimburse you uh, with the payment of the job. So, a few questions have come in. Sure, yeah. This of might course. be a good time to stop. Definitely. On step three. Mm -hmm. um, Laura says, would I be able to have one of my employees do the job? Um, they would need this training, mm -hmm. I assume. Yeah, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, that's actually one of, the be one of the benefits of the program is if you have a multi-inspection firm, you could send your employees to do these jobs after they complete the training, of course. So uh, it's a great, great fill-in job for them to do if things are slow. So, But they would have to complete the training, not absolutely. like the owner of the company. Well, both would. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter says, I'm a licensed home inspector in New York State. I live in New Jersey. Can I perform these in New Jersey? So as of right now, uh, the system works by using the zip code in your membership profile. So you would receive jobs based on the zip code in your InterNACHI profile. Uh, we don't have any workarounds for this yet, but we have been thinking about adding multiple zip codes. I have one guy who works out of two locations, one in Ohio and uh, somewhere in Illinois, I believe. So, And he's getting tons of jobs. So uh, we're the definitely... But he has multiple accounts. So we, we're working on adding... Uh, uh, multiple zip codes to your profile. Does the licensing have anything to do with this program at all? Like if you're licensed as a home inspector or a mold no. inspector? Nope, it does not. So all you need to do is take the training and be a member. Is it because Owens Corning is hiring you like as a contractor? They're not hiring you to perform a home inspection. Exactly. So they're they're hiring you as a third party contractor. You're not performing a roof inspection. It's not a roof inspection. Right. It's simply Extracting and replacing two shingles and taking some photos of the property. And we'll get to details yep. about that. Yep, and we'll show you some of the training as well. I think we should keep going with some questions before sure. we keep going with your steps. Yeah, of course. Um, auto quality. Mario is having some audio, audio quality. Um, this is being recorded, so Mario, um, you can watch it later. Or log out and log back in. Sometimes that does it. I don't want to do repairs. I just want to do roof inspections, said Robert. Hmm. Well, <laughs> this is not the <laughs> right. This might not be the program for you, but we do have a roof inspection training course that you can take on our education page as well. So if you want to just do roof inspections, that's fine too. But you could also use this as an avenue to get roof inspections. Uh, it doesn't hurt to inform the homeowner uh, or their neighbors about what it is exactly that you do. So you can go do the, one of these roof data technician jobs and tell them, hey, I also do roof inspections too. Maybe the, homeowners, uh, the homeowner or their neighbor is curious about what you do. You can give them a business card and say, hey, I'll come back next week. So, And you're not really doing a repair, right? You're not right. there to fix. There's a problem. Right. You're not there to fix it. Right. You're really just there to collect data. Exactly. So you're not doing any repairs, really. So no repairs. Uh, we just ask that you don't cause any damage to the roof, but uh, the training helps with that. Um, will UPS pick up the boxes, or do we drop them off at a UPS drop location? Because that was step two, what are your mm -hmm. boxes? Right. So we would drop off the boxes at the UPS location. Uh, I'm not aware of any inspectors who have them, have them picked up, but maybe some businesses uh, have some UPS contracts or things like that where they pick up uh, tons of mailings. If then UPS you, is coming to your front door, you can just ask them. Absolutely. Then you can... Delivery person there. Right, right. Uh, but it also comes with a label. It's already stuck there. You just stick mm -hmm. the label in and just drop it off. Right. So any avenue to UPS. Yep. Yep. So Lloyd... Uh, tells us that the Lowe's in Memphis no longer carries Owens Corning mm -hmm. shingles. So what do you do? Yeah, so this so this definitely happens sometimes where the Lowe's doesn't carry Owens Corning products anymore. But Owens Corning has a store locator on their website that you can use. You just uh, punch in your zip code and it'll, it'll tell you all the other uh, Owens Corning retailers in, the, in your area. 
So if not the local Lowe's, then maybe an ABC supplier, or there's a couple other ones that are that carry Owens Corning products. And if they don't have them, you could always ask to custom order. Uh, the homeowner is usually okay with delaying the job because they want an exact match of shingles on their roof replaced. So it's not a big deal to just special order the shingles and postpone the job for a couple of days until they get there. So if I'm doing a roof data technician, I get a job, I go to Lowe's, um, they have the shingles there. I can literally walk out the store with the shingles without paying. Right. I have to have my InterNACHI member ID. ID and the number associated with the Owens Corning yeah. account. So you could just grab shingles. Yep. Let's uh, say I make a mistake and I pay him. Mm -hmm. Do I get reimbursed? We'll reimburse you with the job if yep. you accidentally pay for shingles. So any, so like I said, everything is free for uh, an Owens Corning job. We'll always reimburse you for anything. Uh, some people have even done very steep slopes and pitches. Uh, I'm not sure what the accurate word <laughs> you always gets slope. me. Slope. Some people do very steep slopes, and we've actually had a couple guys buy some uh, some harnesses and roof roof gear, so uh, safety first, and then we reimburse them for those purchases as well. So it's, it is job dependent. Um, that doesn't happen often. So, um, but like I said, uh, anything that you purchase on the job is is covered. So um, Laura says that she has, they, I guess, a big company and they work in dozens of zip codes, mm -hmm. maybe for special um, multi-inspector firms or very large coverage areas. Give Tom an email. Yeah, definitely. And, and we'll work something out. If they, if they themselves have InterNACHI profiles, and this is the, the temporary workaround, if they have InterNACHI profiles, you can add the different zip codes to their membership profiles and then they will get job notifications. So that would be a, a temporary solution for that. Peter and uh, Vincenzo both ask about insurance. Do I need some kind of insurance? Mm -hmm. And I don't think Owens Corning really cares. It's the insurance that you may be required by your state as a company, like Workman's Comp and, and things like that. Right. Um, Owens Corning really is taking all of the burden about this contract, that the warranty is their warranty. Right. The work is their work. They're mm -hmm. hiring you to collect information. Mm -hmm. There's no insurance. Yep. Right. And I followed up with Patrick by contact at Owens Corning about this question. And he said that everything, any damage that you might do is covered by Owens Corning or anything like that. But let's say you fall off a ladder or the roof, then that would be your general liability insurance. So uh, anything related to the job covered by Owens Corning, any of your personal mistakes and injury, things like that would be your insurance. If repairs, John asks, if repairs are not being done, then what's the purpose of picking up the shingles? Maybe we're this question will be answered in just a couple of minutes, but mm -hmm. um, what is the purpose of picking up the shingles if, if we're not oh, doing repairs? Basically, Owens Corning needs uh, shingles from the affected area to do an analysis of why of what happened and why there's damage to the shingles. So you would be the technician to go there and extract two shingles, but they also need to, need to be replaced for the homeowner. So uh, you're not necessarily doing a repair, but, um, you know, we have more questions, but let's keep going. Let's yeah. See. Yeah. Maybe some of these questions will get answered as yeah, we go along. I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Got a slide. Over. Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. So the next step after going to Lowe's, picking up your materials would be to collect data. Uh, we give you a list in the training, um, asking you for what kind of photos we would need. Some examples might include the affected area, the fasteners, ventilation, uh, the, the job before and after you extract the shingles, a uh, photo of the shipping label so I can get you paid faster, things like that. And then uh, after you take photos and collect data, um, which by the way, you need to measure the slope too. Um, there's also an application that you could use on your iPhone. This is just a side note uh, that'll measure the slope for you. So just, just an idea if you need a, a quick and easy way to measure the slope, which is one of the things we ask you for. And then so after you collect all the data, you would extract and replace the two full-size shingles, which again, we cover in the training, which I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. And lastly, ship the shingles and upload the data. So you would write the claim number on the box of extracted shingles, so Owens Corning knows which job the shingles belong to. Put the label, the free label on the box and send it to Owens Corning via UPS. Um, after that, you would go home, take all the photos that you took with your digital camera, upload them to the online claim form, which is given in the instruction, instructions, and then uh, the job's done. That's pretty much it. And then uh, 
We recently implemented direct deposit, so you would get paid within about a week when Owens Corning receives the shingles. So they give me a notification, or actually I check the tracking to see when they are dropped off, and then uh, I submit your payment immediately. So our direct deposit system online is very quick. Do they, does, does, they, does the data technician have to wait until the warranty claim is processed, which no. may, may take months? Right, right. the when technician, they... sure. The technician does not need to wait uh, until the claim is processed. We get you paid as soon as you collect the data, as soon as you extract the shingles, and as soon as they are received from, uh, from Owens Corning. All right, so moving on here. So I just want to talk about some of the benefits. Why might you want to get involved? Why might you like this work? Um, so it would fill up the gaps in your schedule. Uh, I'm not saying that you're going to get a job every week. There's not that many roofs uh, available for hundreds of participants in the programs to have a consistent and steady job. But it definitely fills the gaps uh, here and there, especially in the summertime. There's tons of claims that come through. We have some guys uh, getting about three to four jobs a month, so that's about one a week. Uh, and that's at our high end. And uh, so it's just a good way to fill the gaps in your schedule. If, if business is slow, you have no home inspections going on, uh, you could take one of these roof data technician jobs. Um, and going back, to, and the other benefit was additional work for your employees. Uh, I believe we answered this with one of the questions that came up. Um, it's just a good way for some of your inspectors to uh, uh, find something to do. So if they, if you had some empty slots for them, then they could definitely get involved and take the training and, uh, and participate in the program as well. So each job takes about 45 minutes of, of actual work, and that's not much. Um, it's a very quick time to be on the, on the property and to get in, get out. And each job pays 100 to 180 uh, per job. So typically it's 100 to 140, but if you are the only person in the area, the only technician available, or you're willing to travel over 50 miles, we'll pay you 180 per job. And Owens Quoting agreed to that. Um, we think it's just a good way to get uh, more jobs through InterNACHI instead of the homeowner hiring their own contractor. And uh, I wanted to note that, so our top technicians about you know two to three, four jobs per month in the summer. And I've had a couple guys also land apartment complex jobs. So that's about 11 buildings for one job. And they made over $1,000. So I'm not going to say that it happens all the time, but it's definitely possible. Uh, someone puts Owens Corning shingles on all of their apartments. There's a defect, and we need one of our guys to get out there and handle those claims. And again, up to 180 if you travel over 50 miles. Another benefit is no experience is necessary. The, the only requirement to participate is an internet team membership, um, which is a good thing. Uh, I actually took the training myself. The only experience I have on roofs is jumping off of them as a kid. So I feel like if I can do it, uh, it'll be a walk in the park for all of you uh, uh, home savvy people, for sure. And lastly, you would be able to use the certification logo. Um, you could use this logo on your website, your marketing repertoire, your brochures, and it makes you just look a little bit more experienced. Um, so here's the, here's the logo that you would use. Not a bad addition to your marketing repertoire. And finally, I just wanted to share some testimonials, what some of the current technicians are saying about the program. Uh, Luis Martinez, he's uh, one of our guys from Florida. He says, the roof data technician program through Owens Corning has been a great blessing. This year, so far, I have done five jobs, all paying upwards of 120, which have been a great fill-in jobs for my company. Thank you, InterNACHI, for this valuable add-on. Lee Smith from Texas says, the OC program has enabled me to stay on top of my game. Every roof and client is different. Each job I learn something new, and with the home inspection business, this helps me to keep improving my skill set while adding to my resume. Some jobs can be challenging, but for the most part, it's an easy way to help offset the cost of tools, membership dues, and at the same time, networking. I've managed to gather a few clients while doing these jobs. Prospective homeowners are always interested when seeing someone on the roof. Lastly, Steve Bugiel says, being an OC roof data technician has helped fill up empty slots in my schedule, as well as open doors for new projects. I have increased my business by being part of this program from getting other roof inspections from neighbors, as well as doing energy assessments from not only the homeowners I've collected roof samples from, but their neighbors, neighbors as well. 
So as you can see, the program has some pretty great marketing potential. Uh, being in direct contact with the homeowner, their family, their neighbors, who are going to be curious about what it, what exactly you're doing on the roof, uh, it's a great opportunity for you to, to discuss your business and other ancillary services that you might provide. So um, not only would you get paid for doing a quick job, you might have uh, potential to earn some more clients and more jobs. So this is a link to get involved. And we'll answer some more questions here in a bit. But I just wanted to show you that, that, uh, that web page. Thank you. So all you would do, all you need to do is go to nachi.org slash roof. It'll take you to this page. Here's a link to this class, free class registration. It tells you a little bit about the program, a little summary. And then Ben talks about it a little bit too, if you forget some of the information. And then to receive jobs, this is the big, uh, the big one to look at here. So first you would join InterNACHI, and if you're not a member, we will give you a free link at the end of this uh, webinar. And step two, you would sign into the program and complete the training. And then after you receive a job, follow the five step instructions, which uh, I just covered. So let's uh, just take a look at, the, at, the, at what you would log into. So for you if, you, if you're not already a participant, all of these fields would be red. And then your goal would be to turn them all green. So you would add your cell phone, you would pass the course, download your certificate if you wanted it, and upload and sign your agreement from Owens Corning. And that's just a basic agreement. Uh, and then after that, you would just view the course. And then you'd be all set. You'd be on the list to receive automatic job notifications. So I just wanted to show you the course a little bit about what we have going on here. And uh, this is this would be step four. One of the representatives from Owens Courting many years ago came out and demonstrated how to do a shingle extraction and replacement. Um, repeat the process. Again, go slow. Do you want to take Sometimes some more questions? It's easy. Sometimes while it's while they watch? Yeah. Try not to destroy the shingle in the process. Uh, let's see. A lot of questions. Is this program mm -hmm. available in Canada? Not yet, but it has been discussed. So uh, no guarantees on when, but it's definitely open to uh, discussion and conversation. Lori says, so I'm not fixing any damage, just taking a sample. Right, you're not fixing any of the affected area, all you would need to do is extract and replace two shingles for Owens Corning to do an analysis of those shingles. And if you, Jimmy asks about membership, uh, you have to be a member. If you're not a member and attending this live class, email me or Tom and we'll send you a link to join for free um, as a student so you can access the training. Um, current members are current members. Um, Wonder if we don't have an Internet ID. If you don't have an Internet ID, you log into your members only account at natchi.org slash members hyphen only, or just log in. Top right corner, is a, there's a members only login. And at the top, um, there's a, um, a place to order your Internet ID card. Liability for leaks in the area where we extract shingles. Owens Corning provide additional library or additionally insured. Um, the problem is theirs, right? It's their warranty. So sure. there's a contract between their roof warranty and the homeowner. You have nothing to do with it. Right. So this has happened a couple of times. Uh, Owens Corning asked, just asked the technician to go back out there and fix the problem initially. But if it's something more serious, then uh, it would just be looked into. But I'm pretty sure they would cover it too. Yep. And if you're not there to even like speak to the homeowner right. about the damage. You don't even know mm -hmm. what the, really the, the problem is in detail. It could have leaked and caused damage inside, but you're on the outside. Mm -hmm. You're not even aware of really the details. You're just right. there to collect data. Right. right. And that was another thing I forgot to mention is that's another perk to the job is you don't have to be an expert. Uh, you're just there to be a neutral party and to extract and replace shingles. You're not there for an opinion or you know any expert advice. You're just there to to do the job, and the rest is up to Owens Corning. So it's it's pretty pretty simple. Uh, it shouldn't be too much uh, hardship with the homeowner if they're frustrated or anything, because you hey you're just there to to uh, 
to take some shingles and some photos. So people are asking where to go for more information okay. and your contact information. Sure. And it's at that URL, natchi.org slash roof. Um, we went over the pay, Steve. Um, Tom's email is on that URL, natchi.org slash roof. Um, well, then, uh, Peter says, I'm licensed in New York and insured in New York, so I guess I cannot do these inspections in New Jersey since I'm not licensed, therefore not insured in New Jersey. Right. I just want to make the clear distinction between um, you're not being hired as a home inspector. So that's not the service you're providing. So if you're concerned about performing a home inspector in a state that regulates home inspectors, licensed home inspectors, um, this has nothing to do with that program. Um, I think you're talking about performing a home inspection and you're not performing a home inspection. Um, you don't even need to be a home inspector um, to do this job. This is really, initially it was really for contractors um, who were doing roof inspections and roof repairs and being trained um, to do these warranty inspections. So really you're being hired as um, a contractor um, trained by InterNACHI to um, do this shingle data um, extraction and data collection. Um, you're not being hired um, as a home inspector. You're not being trained as a home inspector. Uh, a licensed home inspector is not required to do any of this work. Uh, what is the slope app? Um, I don't know. I think I may have mentioned it in the training, mm -hmm. but I think there's apps maybe for even droids. You know? Sure. I, I, rec I recommend just doing a quick search on your, on your app store, look for a slope application, and there should be a couple free ones in there that you could use. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the turnaround time to complete each project? 45 minutes. Um, what are some of the reasons that a customer calls you for a warranty? Wind or hail? Well, customers don't call the roof data right. technicians. Right. So they, that's all through Owens Corning. We just get a notification that there's a job available in uh, X or Y area. And we send our guys who are close to do that job. But it really depends on the location. Uh, in some areas, there's a lot of wind damage, like like uh, there's a like wind mitigation in Florida. There's stuff like that. Uh, there's hail in you know more northern states, for example, or you know. So it kind of just depends. Texas has a lot of summer heat, so maybe there's blistering or cracking, or you know shingles are fr are pretty frail. So kind of just depends on the location. Justin says that he's a, a manager of a roofing company. Um, how do I? Um, and he's, if, what if he sees problems with the roof? How can he generate a, a warranty job by looking at a roof? He can't, right? The homeowner has to um, trigger this sure. warranty claim. So I guess he's asking about generating leads for his company yeah. through these. Um, that's just like, isn't that, wouldn't that be involved in the ethics, kind of like the ethics course? So uh, can you do that? Like, no, he's, he's saying if he's on a roof okay. and it, Maybe he's talking to a homeowner or driving past a, a home that looks like has problems. Mm -hmm. Can he somehow get this claim job? And I'm saying the homeowner has to call Owens right. Corning. They call 1-800-ROOFING. Right. In fact, if anybody has any questions about this program for you, don't say a word. Just say, please call 1-800-ROOFING. Yep. Definitely. That's Owens Corning. So the homeowner has to generate the lead, essentially. You can't really generate lead. This, this program really isn't a way to... Um, create a bunch of jobs for yourself. You kind of have to like get trained and just wait for an event to happen. Mm -hmm. And the homeowner has to call Owens Corning and, and submit a claim. And that roof actually has to be covered by Owens Corning shingles right. with a warranty. So right. there's a few things. You just can't mm -hmm. drive down your your neighborhood street and, and, say, and yeah. say, hey, you know, Owens Corning, hey, I think yeah, that roof looks really bad. Yeah. yeah, It might not even be Owens Corning shingles. So Right. Uh, if if you get up on a roof and it's not Owens Corning shingles, do you not get paid? You still get paid yeah. for travel. So you that's kind of one of the easier jobs. You get out there and they're not Owens Corning shingles, you still get paid and you just leave. So what if the slope roof uh, the roof slope is too high, can't get up there? Sure. Ass. So the the one of the good things that you can do is we provide the address first. So you could always use Google Maps before you drive thirty miles to the homeowner's location. Take a look at it using uh, Google Google Maps, and if it's too steep, then you can't do it. You know, uh, safety is a priority. If you don't feel comfortable walking on a steep slope or a steep roof, then you can't do it. And we'll try to get it reassigned. But Owens Corning or, knows this, right? They're trying sure. to give our data technicians slopes that are 
walkable. Exactly. Between 12 to 4 to right, exactly. They're not given a steep slope. Mm -hmm. However, if you're trained in steep slope, right? Right, then you can do them. We kind of really like that. The, yeah. You should tell us about that, right? Yeah. You can because, take all the steep slope stuff. Because first of all, you can get paid even more for those jobs since someone, other people are probably not going to be willing to do it. Secondly, any uh, <clears throat> harnesses that you need or safety belts would be reimbursed. So you could just use those for a job like that. Okay, so I think we need to clear up a little bit with Justin about extracting the shingles. You extract two shingles just like we have here in the video, um, mm -hmm. it was yellow, remember? Uh, he was extracting mm -hmm. the yellow shingles. We show you how to extract the shingles, right? And then you were actually replace them. That's why you go to Lowe's and get a couple shingles because the shingles that you extract and keep in good shape and put in the box and ship to Owens Corning, they're gonna be replaced. And um, so you have to extract and replace shingles, two shingles in the affected area. And if that freaks you out, um, this, this program is not for you. But a lot of the people that are participating in the program have been on the roof. They've built roofs. They've installed roofs. They've repaired mm -hmm. roofs. So they're kind of familiar <clears throat> with that. And if you mean repairing the affected area, uh, that's just uh, kind of, I mean, the the purpose of the warranty is to figure out if Owens Corning is going to pay for any new shingles to go onto the roof. So we're not really uh, repairing the affected area yet because Owens Corning needs to know if it's a shingle defect or if it's normal wear and tear from the weather or other things or, or installation or installation. Problem. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, once it's determined that a replacement roof is required by Owens Corning, can you refer a roofer? What's the term that a replacement is required? No, that's an ethical, uh, conflict, right. right? You can't be generating leads for your business. Uh, this has happened in the past. We went through this vetting process, uh, filtering process in our pilot program. So we understand who comes back and who is hired to do a replacement of the roof. And um, there should be no, um, there should be a lot of transparency. Um, you have to act as a third party neutral. Um, so you can't be going up on a, a roof with a problem, uh, doing a shingle extraction, and then telling the homeowner that I'll be back in a little bit because we're gonna replace this roof, right? That is actually the problem that we're solving by getting third party neutrals to be on the roof. Um, so if you're a roofing company, you probably may not want to be participating in the program. It's too much of a conflict of interest. Um, a couple questions. Will we be able to get a discount on a ladder? Hmm. So can you go to Lowe's sure. and take out a ladder? That's never, been, that's never been asked before, but I'm <laughs> always willing to ask Owens Corning. <laughs> yeah. I'm always willing to, to see if Owens Corning would pay for that, for sure. Because if you have a one-story ladder and you want to do a two-story job, then it's definitely a possibility. How do leads get distributed if there are multiple techs in my area? How do leads get distributed if there first are First one? Sure. So right now we have a system where it's first to reply, uh, gets the job. So if you're quick to the draw on your email, then you know I send it to you. But I've been getting a lot better about evenly distributing them through technicians. So if, if three people respond within an hour or two, and one of them has done 20 Owens Corning's jobs and the other two have done five, then I'll, even if the guy with 20 responded first, I'll try to give it to the guys who haven't done as many jobs. Just try to keep it fair. Um, I see the other questions and they can be um, in previous questions and they can all be answered <clears throat> on that one landing page um, there and also within the online training. Let's say you don't want to touch any shingles, right? That's a good question though. Just what's that? First of all. Oh, Sorry, real quick. Does the shingles? Yeah, go ahead. Does the shingles have to be? Do the shingles have to be extracted oh, yeah. in the field, or can it be done on the roof's edge? So again, safety is a priority. Uh, we have had a couple of jobs where you can extract them from the edge because typically the affected area covers most of the shingles. So yes, you'd be able to just take them from the ladder instead of actually walking on the roof. Yeah. So yeah, safety first. Yep, definitely. If you're not comfortable going up on a roof, then then don't do it. Yeah. Right. Um, have we had any major problems? Anybody fall off a roof yet? Yep, one. One? One, but he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> um, so if you want more information, if you want to access the program, um, you want a free membership for non-members attending this live class, if you're watching on YouTube, you missed it out. Um, go to natchi.org forward slash roof, and um, you can uh, email Tom with any more questions, yeah, sure. right? Yep, so my email address is on here, or it's tom at internatchi.org. You can find me on the contact page as well org slash contact. But just go ahead and go onto this link and you'll find all the information you need to get started. 
If you have, and if you have additional questions, feel free to, to let us know. All right, everybody. Thanks, Tom, for being cool. here. Hey, thanks Tell so much. about the program. Yeah, thanks. Bye, everybody. See ya. Good job, man.